Dino briefed me on what had happened. I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. I can't believe that she's acting like this. I apologize to Dino. I apologize to Dino's wife. Yeah. And I was just like, just so upset. So I'm trying to, you know, pick her up and take her outside, put her in a car. And Dino's like, bye, bye, bye. And she's like, but what, what do you mean bye? What do you mean bye? <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Yeah, she started getting pissed because she didn't want to leave. She did not want to leave. She too legit to quit. She too legit. To, you know, Danya has the whole Barbie room inside <coughs> inside the den. Right. So she was like, I wanted to play inside the Barbie house. I'm like, bitch, if you don't oh get your God. motherfucking ass in the car. Oh, my God. I didn't even know about that. Yes. <laughs> on your porch. That's why we, it was taking uh, us so long to get her out the door. Yeah. And then she was like, my shoes, my shoes. I'm like, your shoes are already in the car, boo. Right. Come on, just your get shoes, in. Your purse, everything. everything. All we need is you. I had packed up her the stuff that she left at right. my house. I put that in the car. I'm taking you right home. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. You're going home, and you better hope you make it all the way there because how I'm feeling right now and what I just heard, I'm, I'm just, I might just take you to your daddy's house. So... We in a car, we're driving back to Hollywood, and she's um, covering my eyes with her hand. She's, while you're driving? While I'm driving. Oh, my God. She poking me in the side while I'm driving. She stuck both of her bare feet out the passenger side window while I'm driving. She climbed from the front, took her seatbelt off, climbed from the front seat to the back seat, and back from the back seat to the front seat while I'm driving. Oh, my God. And just just the same thing that you said, you know, she was very erratic. She went from trying to be mad at me inside the car, like, oh, I can't believe you betrayed me, to <laughs> then crying, to then, like, laughing and dancing with the music up. Like, I'm just like, God, all please, over all over the map. I'm yeah. just, like, praying to God, like, God, please just let me drive back to her house get her and get her safe. yeah get and get house. her in her house where you can lock her up thank you well <laughs> yeah. she can lock her own self up right, at this right. point you you trying to kill me and i'm trying to help you oh my god yeah. so we get so i get get her all the way back in front of her house after all the escapades and everything that she's doing and and uh, it's almost not even making it i have to slam on my brakes and uh, the whole nine get in front of her house i help her take her stuff out the car and put it on her porch and she's just standing in my door like the passenger side door she's standing right there so i get back inside the car and I'm like, Shark, close the door. Go inside your house. Go. And she just like all wobbling, drunk. I'm like, Shark, close my door. So she's just and standing then, there. I, and I'm, I'm guessing it's been a, a good two and a half hours since she's had her last drop of liquor at this point. Mm -hmm. I would like to say so. It took us like 35 minutes to Did drive. You, for because she hadn't had anything to drink for a long time. She finished this, this bottle a long time before Dee Dee got here. Yeah, but if she hadn't eaten anything all the other, all that liquor the whole day. She, yeah, yeah, but I, I don't know. I and don't know what she did when she, when, she, when she was gone. And I'm sure right. that blue but lipstick is toxic. She did something. That blue lipstick was toxic. Happy 20th anniversary, y'all. <laughs> This dude. <laughs> if you have not listened to our 200th oh episode, oh my god! Please go you listen to, to it. You, it'll get, make this story all the, like even that much more yeah. like oh, better. Wow. wow! Yeah, she so, grew yeah. from that seed <sighs> to that yes. mighty oak. This to the oak tree that is. She started off as a small nut and she grew into a mighty oak. <laughs> so, this, so we're not done. Not done. I know yeah. So I'm like, sure, close my door, close my door. She's standing there, she's wobbling. So I reached over from the from the driver's seat to the passenger seat just to try to close it myself so I can go. I'm done looking at her face. And she slammed my door, my car door. <laughs> she said she slammed my door. She slammed my, she slammed my passenger door. <laughs> yeah. And then y'all know, Swim <laughs> might have, like, you know, it, it, she all right. I was anxious all week, though. Because I was really afraid that I was like, oh, my God, please don't. And th that was another reason why I felt really way only more comfortable about letting her go with Didi. Only feel comfortable with letting her go with Didi. Because like I said, I didn't trust anybody with her at this time. Because I was like, what if what if I put her in a cab or whatever and she's and she's assaulted and she's like so messed up. She thinks it's me. Oh. Don't even know what I'm saying. Like she don't know who assaulted her. And mm -hmm. the last person she remembers is me. And so mm -hmm. I get pinned for it. You know what I mean? And then I was just like, what if she like feels like, you know. When I when she was ragdolling or whatever, and I like you know I groped her or something, or I was just oh my god, I was just I was just so worried that 
I was gonna get some kind of call or oh somebody. Oh my god! Was, I was just like, Again, y'all, listen to the. She's a episode. fucking grown up. Because you will also hear in the two hundredth episode, Dino was so such a great host and cordial to her. And I, she was oh, acting I tried up to warn him very early in the show. But Dino's like, no, it's okay, it's all right. I mean, you know, good. He's trying to be a good host and blah blah blah. But we we is over here with her energy right next to mm-hmm. us, and she's grabbing my elbow and touching me, and I'm she ready was to speak, and she trying yeah, to see, pull my know. shirt. She see was mad at me. Remember when I tried to tell her, Char, you got to be quiet. You got to be quiet. Take your ass and sit on the couch. You know, I don't know why you gave her headphones and let her sit. I wanted her to sit over there. And she was mad at me for saying that. Right. And so she scooted over next to Pip. Uh-huh. So, cause she, so that's why she scooted over next to Pip because she was mad at me already for uh-huh. telling her, "We gonna put you the fuck out if you don't shut up." <laughs> right. And Dino was being nice, like, "We not gonna put her out. We not gonna put her out. She fine. She not doing it. She fine." I'm like, Dino, I know she she wasn't the, doing bad, but she wasn't the, yeah. doing bad. But I was just trying to scare her a little bit so she wouldn't go further. Yeah, I wasn't aware of all of that, and most of the stuff that me I, I knew about was me was either off mic. So I'm like, you know, she's, you know, she's off mic or whatever with, you know, a lot of stuff. Because we paused a couple times right, and yeah. things like that. And that's when, she, you know, most of the time I heard her trying to, you know, and I wasn't aware of all the pinching and touching and the elbowing and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I was just, and, and I didn't want her sitting on the couch because you don't get the full experience of the show over there. Right. You know what I mean? Well, no, I no, I get phones, it. I get know. it. Yeah. Any normal, regular person, even Danya, <laughs> even a child, could have sat right here <laughs> with a head with even the head. Jack. And Jack. <laughs> Come on now. We could have gave Jack some headphones. <laughs> he probably would have sat more still because he would have known what was going on. <laughs> oh my God. Anybody, a child could have sat right here with the headphones and you say, excuse me, little Johnny, can you keep it down? <laughs> Johnny would say, oh, I'm sorry, Miss Dijon. Thank you. De- thank you, Johnny. And we could continue with the show. But for a grown ass woman older than me, I don't I can't accept that. I can't accept that. I cannot accept that. You can't control your own self. No, she cannot. I can I can't. I can't. It came up to me. Somebody so said that use that phrase, the phrase I hate actually. Um uh, you feel in some kind of way about I hate when people say that actually because it's like yeah. oh I'm, it's a very specific way. You don't have to call it some kind of way. <laughs> you know Just the way. Just say the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was pretty clear to me the way I was feeling about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told her, I told her when we paused the show, I told her, I'm like, sure, you got to be quiet. You can't be distracting because that was the whole thing. I'm like, you can't be like just distracting. Like we trying to, you know, whatever you want to laugh and whatever, but we're going to put you out. I'm like, You're going to get put out. You're going to get put back over there on the couch. And we were celebrating a big occasion. And Dino was like, no, she fine. She all right. She ain't. And I'm just like, I was like, Dino, let me, <laughs> let me do it. And he was like, no. And I was like, all right, fine. All right, Shar, you straight. Now she was feeling some type of way, so she scooted over, and then then <laughs> she should have never scooted by. Pit. Yeah, that was. <laughs> she thought Pip was gonna save her. That's what it was. Very emotionally draining for me. That, v- very that much for both of us, and I apologize to you and your family again, Dino, because that was not that ain't right. Nobody should um behave that way. Oh my! All right, we halfway into the show already. Right, and so <laughs> well, <sighs> that what. <clears throat> and uh, at the the event that Pimp hit it, hinted at earlier uh, was the, the the murder of uh, local rapper and community activist Nipsey Hussle. Uh, he he, I don't know exactly where around here he's from, but I know he's from around here because I first met uh, Nipsey Hussle years ago before you know he got he he made it, and he was at the gas station uh, like you know slinging his uh, CDs. Yeah. And I for the for for years I had his his, uh, his mixtape um, handwritten with you know his name on it uh, up at my house. I, I don't know it just appeared. Um, hopefully it it turn up again because it kind of might be a collector's item or something. But anyway, um, and he was just always around. You know I I would always see him over there on that same intersection on uh, Crenshaw and Slauson. Right. So I just figured he was after you know even after he became you know famous. I figured he just lived somewhere around. I don't know exactly where, but. And then, you know, his store is right over there. So anyway, um, yeah, he was he was gunned down. It looks like it turned out it was like some somebody he knew some somebody from um, the neighborhood that was, you know, they got into like a a minor altercation. Like if you can even call it that, you know, uh, from what I hear it, the, the, the day before the day prior Saturday, he came around. And this guy is apparently a known snitch or something like that and not not like not well liked in the neighborhood. 
and he told him that he could, you know, he asked him to leave, leave his store, that he wasn't welcome there or whatever, and the guy left. And so he comes back the next day, Sunday, and uh, walks up on Nipsey and executes him. And then he jumps into this, this getaway car in the alley and uh, gets away. I heard he's uh, been caught now. Yeah. He's been caught. Yeah, he's been, he's, Eric Holder is his name. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's since been caught. And uh, the community here. Chris is Darden the, is his attorney. Yes, Chris Darden. Exactly. Yeah, Chris Darden is his uh, defense attorney. Right. Mm-hmm. So he, he finds himself in some precarious uh, cases. Cases that Chris Darden. Mm. But uh, anyway, um, for those of you who are not familiar with Nipsey Hussle, he 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 was not super famous, but he was his his fame was growing. His he just won a Grammy, growing. or he just got nominated for a Grammy. Yeah, and he was uh, very well loved in the community. The community had like a, a a very intense reaction to to his uh his murder. He's been mentioned on this show. Yeah, and he he has they they've been out there having vigils for him. It's been a week now. Every day down like, there. Every day. Every day. And helicopters and stuff were like buzzing around the news and whatever for like days afterwards it was oh very nerve-wracking well i stopped to get us some donuts this morning at sloss and donuts which is across the street mm-hmm. from yes. the marathon and so it is still people there's a police there's heavy police presence mm-hmm. and it's but it's still people paying respect it's still people bringing yeah. flowers his car his car is still there mm-hmm. that he drove to work that day uh Oh, it's so sad. It's so sad. Yeah, it really. I go, everywhere I go in South LA, people talking about it. Yeah, because he touched the whole city. Like I'm from the Nipsey Hustle time frame, and so just to know, like so many. My aunt lived on High Park and Crenshaw. My one of my closest friends lived on uh, Florence and Fifth Ave, which is like the next b- few blocks over from Crenshaw. So I was in that neighborhood all the time every day if not every week my mom lived right on western western engaged so so just to know the demographic of the area just to know how hard it is and just to know that he had overcome all of that and not only persevered but also gave so much to his community to have somebody who was accused of being a snitch come back and take him down like that that's that's just it hurts for our whole city and I'm I'm happy to know that we all are, have been coming together and, you know, making all these truces in his name because that's what he was trying to do. It's 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 hard. This one is this hard. Too. Early on, there was reportings of there uh, of uh, some mayhem at the vigils. Like right. there was a, a couple of stabbings, and some fake other news. Things. The, the right. No, there, there really was a stampede, though. There, there yeah, was, there was a stampede. There, there was a stampede, but there were no stabbings. And yeah, so. Well, I know what happened. And there were some people oh. that was some. You know, people injured in the stabbing. I mean, in the stampede. stampede. But but there there was no other type of violence. Yeah, two thing. girls. Two girls had got into a fight and they knocked over the candles, and then everybody started running because they didn't want to get caught on fire. And then you know, once some people started scattering, and everybody started running, and yeah, Can that's just how it happened. I, I just want to say, uh, and this no, this no disrespect, uh, but when you, so when you say the whole city. I find that just kind of strange because it's not really, it's, it's the black community speci- specifically. And I only bring this up because, you know, my boyfriend Jason works in a white barbershop in West Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And I spent the day yesterday in a black beauty shop getting my hair did here in South L.A. Mm-hmm. And so he and I were talking. I was like, I was, I was, like, I was there because I got color done, too. And I was there like five hours at the mm-hmm. shop. So I heard every, all the conversations for the day. And it was so much of it was about Nipsey, Nipsey you know, and, cause, and, and, and then Jason's like, oh, He's like, I know of this event. I know what's happening because it because because of me. He goes, but nobody's talked about it while I work this whole week. Yeah. So, but I think yeah. to the black community, he's meant a really a lot, like a lot. Because Definitely. He gave back to his. his Definitely. Yeah, Definitely. He had not absolutely. Over yet. A lot of a lot Def- of other absolutely. cultures were not aware of him. Yeah. Yeah. And they and I and I actually saw a post that somebody posted where they were saying like, oh, before Nipsey Hussle passed away, he had like one point five million followers something now he has like four million and everybody that's trying to jump on the nipsey hustle bandwagon now but it's not okay. that it's not even that he's reaching an entirely new demographic exactly. that's people that never heard of him or probably never would have heard of him right. or never would have you cared to hear about him are now opening up their hearts opening up their minds to see that this person who was a gang banger or a gang member did something great did something positive and did not deserve to die he was a real person well you know lift them up that'll be really great and also like I, we talk about all the time about these people that are celebrities and they ain't got nothing to offer actually there actually is somebody that could be aspirational to somebody right about what you can be what you can do 
Like, yeah, let's let's talk about them. I'm I'm all I'm all for. It. Yeah. You can iconize him. I iconize him. He's cool. Yeah. I was a big fan. Did Did you guys hear about the Kodak Black thing? How do you feel about what he said? I didn't hear it. I didn't either. I don't know what it is. Yesterday, Kodak Black came out and was and said he was doing a live video and he said he was going to give Lauren London a year to grieve and then he was going to go after her or something like that. Oh, that was very tasteless. Yeah. It was just